Tomorrow, an important moment in the Humboldt Broncos bus crash story. The driver of the semi-truck that blew through a stop sign right into the path of the hockey team's bus will be sentenced. 16 people were killed in that crash last April. Jazz Courage Singh Sidhu pleaded guilty to 29 charges. With the convictions came many of the details about what happened that terrible night, but there is one crucial unanswered question. Why did Sidhu not pay attention to multiple stop signs? Today, Susan Ormiston went back to where the crash happened. Jaskarit Singh Sidhu pleaded guilty and apologized, but he still can't or won't explain how his crime occurred. Here's what we do know. Last April 6th was a clear day just like this. Sidhu had been driving a rig by himself for just a week and he'd never been to this part of the prairies before. In fact, he got lost a bit trying to find the place where he was picking up a load of peat. Once loaded up on his way, the tarp on his load started to flap. He stopped to tie it down and then continued on but looking back. That insecure tarp is the only thing his lawyer could name which may have distracted Sidhu on his route. Distracted enough to miss not one or two, but four signs on the road indicating he was approaching an intersection before the large flashing stop sign. This was not a momentary lapse, according to the Crown, as if Sidhu had glanced out the side. This is not just one sign, not two, three, it's four. He completely ignored them. How does that happen? All he had to do was stop, just stop. We wouldn't even be here today. Defense counsel Mark Brayford told the court in January he wished there was a more fulsome explanation. I can't tell people what happened. He simply doesn't know. A classic case of inexperience working against him. He recognizes that. Sidhu didn't break here at the stop sign at all. He flew through this intersection at between 86 and 96 kilometers an hour. The Broncos bus driver heading north spotted the rig only at the last moment as it barreled across his path. He did brake hard, reacting faster than normal, but Glenn Dirksen couldn't have avoided the collision. In court last January, Sidhu spoke haltingly, saying he didn't know what had happened when he crawled out of his upturned cab, which leaves a terrible void for families who desperately want to know why, to get some concrete explanation for the crash. You know, every day now, it's. It was a year ago, the last time we saw him. It was a year ago. The last time this happened, it was a year ago. You know? It's, uh, this week is gonna be tough. So now it's up to Judge Inez Cardinal to weigh what penalty for dangerous driving without drugs or alcohol, but which caused so much death and injury. 16 players and team staff were killed, 13 more injured. The last Bronco to get out of hospital, Morgan Gobey, was just released this month. After 333 days, he still struggles to walk and talk. There is no precedent in Canada for the scale of a crash like this due to dangerous driving. Criminal lawyer Dan Brown. Uh, the judge also has to consider the fact that he's never been in trouble before, that he's pled guilty at an early opportunity, and that he's expressed remorse. So on one side we have the injuries that are caused and the deaths that are caused, and on the other side you have all these other factors weighing against a harsh sentence. The Crown has proposed 10 years, which would far exceed previous penalties for dangerous driving where there's no drugs or alcohol. But no matter what jail time he gets, if it's over six months, he'll serve it here and then, according to law, because he's a permanent resident and not a Canadian citizen, he will be deported back to India. Susan Ormiston, CBC News, near Melfort, Saskatchewan. We heard briefly from Scott Thomas in Susan's piece. He's the father of Evan Thomas, one of the Humboldt players who died in that crash. He actually met Jazz Kurt Singh Sidhu in January, and he described that moment to us today and how he's remembering his son. It was a meeting of two broken men. He's broken, I'm broken, I'll never be the same, he'll never be the same. And uh, it's made what's going to happen tomorrow almost irrelevant. His grad, this is his grad picture on this arm and his handprint on this arm. And um, the theory behind this one is every time I shake somebody's hand, that I meet new, his hand's right there too. And and actually now when my family, my dad and my brothers, whenever we get together, we don't shake hands. They all put their hand right here and shake his hand first. And so it's, 
he's with me wherever I go, and I got pretty big hands, and he had he had big hands too. So, yeah.